Yo, what's up guys? Brennan Edwards here with Business Casual and I wanna to talk to you guys about the importance of business partners when it comes to starting a business and running it. So let's get into it. So the first question you have to ask yourself when it comes to business partners and all that is, do I need one? Do you need a business partner? What's the pros and what's the con? First of all, let's start off with the pros. The pros of having a business partner is the first thing is that you can split the responsibilities and the costs of running a business with them. That's a big deal. When you're starting a company, depending on what your financial situation is, depending on what your overhead's gonna be for the company, depending on what kind of company you have, having a partner that brings these sets of, uh, another set of skills to be able to split those responsibilities with can be a game changer for you. Let's say you start a business where you're selling widgets. Obviously, every business needs an accountant and a lawyer, and if your business partner happens to have their CPA or has passed the bar, that's gonna save you a lot of money because I run a business right now and I'll tell you, that an accountant and a lawyer are two of the highest bills that we have because you need that. So whether that be they design the widget, they make the widget, they work in manufacturing, whatever they bring to the table outside of money is a big deal. And if they do bring the money to the side of the table or help cover those expenses, it's almost like a roommate. You don't have to cover it all yourself and that takes that burden away from you. So those are normally the biggest reasons why you want to have a business partner. Now let's look at the cons. The possible cons of having a business partner is, well, you're giving up something. To be able to have all the good, you gotta have, you have to give up something for that. And one of those things you give up is controlling power. When you're looking at the percentages of how a company is run, it's always a bad idea to say, I have one business partner and we both have 50% of the company. That doesn't work because what happens when you guys get to a stalemate and you cannot decide on which direction something should happen? How do you, how do you decide who wins? And if you have that decided way ahead of time, where it's like, okay, I'm 51%, you're 49, or I'm 60, you're 40, or however that may work, that's a big deal to be able to help do that tiebreaker, deal breaker, as well as the system of power, so that you don't have to have these horrible discussions trying to figure out, well, I mean, we started this together and it's half and half, so you know, I said that's wrong, you said it's right, well, let's just end the business now. It can end up really bad. I, I personally recommend that you just have a power structure that you have a uh, higher percentage, lower percentage, so that there's never, there's always gonna be an imbalance when it comes to decision making so that you can come to that cleanly. Another con is that when it comes to the way that you're running the company, the way you believe the company should be ran, or the group dynamics of the company, if someone isn't fitting in with the company culture that's being created and they aren't owner of the company, it can be really difficult to number one, get them out of the company, and number two, change the way that they approach that company culture. Now, a lot of people don't like to talk about company culture as an important thing, but it really, really does matter because it directly re reflects to the morale of all the employees or the people or the vendors that are working with you. If you have an office full of people and there's one business owner that's super positive and one business owner that's super negative, then it's going to create a sort of like a Red Sea rift, if you will, that's gonna have all of your employees wanting to work with one side of the company and other, not working with the other, and it causes problems that will cost time. And in business, time is money. So what you really wanna do is not only make sure that they have the pros of bringing all those good things, but a really big deal is that they're bringing the right attitude to the company so that when you guys get into the thick of it, because you will get into the thick of it and it will get difficult, they're gonna have the right attitude to be able to work with you, row the same boat, row the boat the same way as everyone else, and wanna get out of there and make sure that you guys are taking care of business so that you maintain having a business. Now onto the idea of having multiple business partners. Instead of just having one business partner, you can have majority owned businesses by saying, oh, this person has 40%, this person has 30%, this person has 10%, this person has 20%. As long as it equals to 100, you can design that however you want. Now, obviously you look back at those pros and cons and the way that you split those percentages splits the power of the company and what the controlling interest is. So you wanna be very careful if you are the founder of the company that you are you are in the position of power if you can be, or you entrust the people who do have that position of power to work. Because how you are today may not be how you are five years from now. And that's a really big deal to consider of saying that not only me, but how they are five years from now may be different. Not bringing a physical difference in the pros in the sense of they bring a technical skill, they bring like lawyer, like uh, CPA, or any of those things to the table, and what they simply bring as themselves is not necessarily enough. You can't just have somebody be a part of your business simply because they're there in the beginning. They need to be able to bring something and also bring that attitude, or you might end up having to deal with some, some really harsh decisions, conversations, and financial losses later on. Speaking of dealing all those things later on, let me just tell you how it can go. If you start a business with someone that you don't want to finish that business with or things don't continue moving forward and you decide you wanna split, typically that split happens a financial way. It's like however much money the company has or whatever the company is valued at is typically where you split out and have to pay somebody out that percentage. If your company is valued at $100,000, they have a 30% share, you have to give them $30,000. 
$30,000. Now, do you have $30,000 just because your company is valued at $100,000? You may or may not. Chances are you don't because a lot of valuation comes in non-liquid equity. The non-liquid equity being the things that you do to do your job, whether that be your laptops, whether that be your cameras, whether that be your drones, whether that be your, you know, your widget making widgets, you know, whatever that may be, your office space that you may own, the vehicles that you do, you have to own, run your business, all those things add to the valuation of the company, but that doesn't mean that you have the money from them. So you may end up having to sell part of what you're doing or start part of the assets that you have for the company just to be able to keep it going when someone decides that they don't want to be in the company anymore or you decide that you don't want to be in the company anymore, which can be very difficult and can be crippling and possibly kill the company in itself. All right, and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the best way that I have found to identify a really strong business partner. I'd say the number one attribute for me um, when I look for somebody that I would want to start a business with is dependability. That's really what it comes down to. Are they going to do what they say they're going to do? How you are in any moment is how you are in every moment. I truly believe that. And if you look at every little action they make, every promise they say, they'll be here on this time. They'll have this to you at this day. They'll you know, do all the things they say they'll do. Do they do them? Are they consistent about it? Do they challenge you to, be, to grow? Like, are they the ones that are gonna continue to push you to be better and let you know when you're messing up? Be able to stand up to you and not just do everything you ask them to do. Just because you may be the, might be the CEO, just because it might be your baby and you might have come up with a business doesn't mean you're always right. And having somebody as an owner and another as a business partner to be able to sit you down and let you know when you're wrong and you'd respect them enough to listen because you know that they only would tell you if it was real. That is what I look for in a strong business partner. And I think regardless of technical skills, regardless of the money they bring to the table, regardless of the split of responsibility, if they have that element about doing what they say they'll do, you believe them, you believe in them, and you know that they're smart enough to be able to let you know when you need to know, then you may be looking at a good business partner. So best of luck in finding them. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this business casual video. I hope you enjoyed it. We have more coming, so make sure you check them out. And the ones we've already done, we got here. Or if you guys just want to see the intro video to this cool, obviously cool YouTube channel, we got it here because we do more than just business. We do a lot more. As always, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notifications so you can know whatever we drop hot fire like this video was. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to get to them as soon as I can. Take care and be well.